Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and you've never seen me before, my name's Sam. I am a licensed hairstylist and I am going back dark. And I thought that I would share with you the process and teach you how to go from light hair to dark hair the proper professional way. I know it probably sounds very straightforward, like, okay, I wanna go dark, I'm just gonna throw a dark color on and be done with it. But if your hair's been bleached and it's pretty porous, just throwing a dark color on top of that is not always going to give you the nice, rich, dark brown results that you want. It can look really flat and dull and kind of have like a green hue to it. So I'm gonna show you how to fill the hair properly so that your hair is nice and strong and healthy and you get a nice, really shiny, rich result. So I'm gonna start by showing you all of the products that I'm gonna be using. First step is putting on a cape, or if you don't have a cape, just like a old t-shirt that you don't care about getting stained. You're going to need a color bowl and a color brush to apply the color with. You're also going to need something to measure your color with. So if you have a food scale, you can weigh it out, that works. Or if you have a measuring cup, use that. Then this is optional. You could use your color brush to mix everything up, but if you have a little whisk, that will be helpful for mixing up the color. You're also going to need gloves, of course. Anytime you're going dark, the color is going to stain like crazy. And then also a color bottle. This is gonna be for the last step. I'm thinking after the color is done, I might throw a gloss on top as the final step just to like seal everything in, make it nice and shiny, and make sure everything is like really even. And then as far as the actual color that I'm gonna be using, this is going to be a two, possibly three step process, but it's very important that you do it this way, like I said, in order to get the best results and make sure that your color comes out looking really nice and rich and shiny and all of that. So first we need our filler color. My hair right now is, I would say overall, like about a level eight, maybe a level nine in some places. And my goal color is a level four. So I'm gonna be going down four to five levels so I need something that's gonna be kind of right in the middle of that, that's going to fill back all of that warmth underlying pigment in my hair. When you bleach or lighten your hair, you are stripping your hair and taking all of the pigment away from your hair. So when you wanna go darker, it's important to put that pigment back first before you add the dark color, if that makes sense. So if you look at like a hair level chart, the underlying pigment of each color, the darker your hair is, it starts out as red, then orange, then gold, then yellow, as you get to like a really light blonde. So because I wanna be back at a level four, I need to add back those like gold orangey tones into the hair, because if I don't fill it first with that underlying pigment, it's not gonna hold as well and it's not gonna look as nice. So I'm going to be doing a warm coppery level seven on my hair. All of the specific products I'm using are professional only, but you can get similar non-professional options at Sally Beauty Supplies. So I'll put links to all of the products that I'm using in the description, and then I will also put the Sally's options as well in the description. And the filler color that I'm gonna be using will be a demi-permanent. Demi-permanent has larger color molecules, so it holds in bleached hair better than permanent would. So I'm using Wella Color Touch. I'm gonna to be mixing seven stroke four three with seven stroke seven three. This is a level seven red gold with a level seven brown gold. Just something that's gonna give you like a coppery color. This I just had left over, but I didn't have enough to do my entire head with. And then they were completely sold out at the store of any of this. For the professionals out there, ideally I would wanna do a stroke four three or a stroke three four, something just like really orange but um they were completely out of those so seven three i feel like is gonna still be good and give me that warmth and that gold that i want mixed with the four three i think it should work but just some kind of like coppery orangey gingery color doesn't have to be like anything specific. We just wanna make sure that we are filling the hair and getting it nice and warm. Now Sally's does have like protein fillers that you can spray on your hair before applying your dark color. I'm gonna be honest, I've never used those before, so I'm not entirely sure how well they work, but this is like the way, if you were to go get your hair done in a salon, this is the way most stylists are gonna do this process. So this is 
the way I feel comfortable doing it, the way I know works, the way I know how, so that's what I'm doing. So that's gonna be the first step, the first color that we do. And then for my actual dark color, I'm using Wella Colestan Perfect. This is a permanent color, and this is in the shade 4 stroke 71, which is a level 4 brown ash. I will say when you're going darker, especially on top of previously bleached hair, whatever shade you want to be, I would go one level up to be on the safe side because your hair is more porous, so it's going to suck that color up more, and it's most likely going to end up coming out a little bit darker than what you want. So I would just go up a shade to be on the safe side. I am totally fine with my hair coming out like as dark as possible basically. My goal is like a Kourtney Kardashian like dark, dark, dark brown, almost black basically. And then for all of those colors that we're going to be using, I got 10 volume developer. You want to use 10 volume or lower because this is all going to be deposit only. We don't want to lift at all. Obviously we're going darker, there's no need to lift. So. 10 volume or lower on that. And then the last step, this isn't always like 100% necessary, but I do find that whenever you're going from light to dark, it usually does take like a second layer of dark color in order to like really get everything super even and get it like as dark as you want and like nice and shiny. So I am gonna be using Redken Shades EQ. This is a gloss, so it's gonna seal everything down, add shine. And this is in the shade 4N, sticking with the level 4. And then I just have the processing solution to go along with that. So again, I will have the Sally's alternatives to all of these products. But that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be filling the hair first with a coppery color. Then we're going to be putting our permanent dark color on top. And then we're going to throw a dark gloss over top of that to seal everything in and get it nice and even. So just brushing through to make sure there's no tangles in my hair and then parting it down the middle just to make the application as easy as possible. Let me put my gloves on. So I'm gonna start with the 743 Wella Color Touch. I'm just gonna squeeze out whatever is left in this tube. There was about like half a tube left so there's like an ounce of color in here. I'm going to put a little bit of the 773. With Demi Permanent, you need to do a 1 to 2 ratio with developer, so double the amount of developer to color. So I don't actually need too, too much color. So I think I'm going to just do like one and a half ounces of color. So again, you don't have to use like exactly the same color that I'm using. I wouldn't even do this if I had the option, um, but I did one ounce of 743 and then half an ounce of 773, just so you know exactly what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna take my 10 volume developer and I'm gonna do double the amount. So since I have one and a half ounces of color, I'm gonna add three ounces of developer and I'm gonna work from the bottom up and because I have a darker root and we're doing deposit only and this color is a few levels lighter than my natural color it's not gonna do anything to it plus I don't want to fill my natural color I really just need to fill what's been bleached so I'm just going to focus this first color on the ends and mids of my hair wherever it's blonde. I like to just comb it through, make sure it's fully saturated. Okay, now that everything is applied, I am going to leave this to process for 30 minutes and then I am going to shampoo it out of my hair. I might do a little bit of light conditioner just so that way my hair will be like easier to brush through and then I will be back.
just rough dried my hair <laughs> it looks insane i just wanted to get most of the moisture out it's still like a tiny bit damp it doesn't have to be 100 percent bone dry but i just didn't want it to be wet anymore now we're going to mix up our dark color so again for that i'm using wella kp in the shade four stroke seven one and this is a permanent color this color is going to be a little bit darker than my natural like about a level darker so i wanted to get permanent i'm going to apply this roots to ends i'm just going to use the entire tube and with the permanent it's just a one-to-one -one ratio so since i did two ounces of color i'm going to do two ounces of 10 volume developer and I'm going to do the same thing, split my hair down the middle, and I'm going to apply it to the roots of my hair first, and then go through and pull it down on the ends. Because the ends are more porous, they're going to suck up the color quicker than my roots will, because the roots are fresh hair, they're not as porous, they're going to be a little bit more resistant. So I want the roots to have a chance for the color to sit on a little bit longer, so that way everything will come out nice and even. I don't want my ends to be darker than my roots. And the easiest way I find to do that is just start from a middle part, apply it to the top, and along the hairline. And if you're worried about staining, you can take Vaseline or even some like conditioner or something and apply it along your hairline and like on your ears and stuff. But personally, I don't really care. <laughs> And then I'm going to split down the side, like behind my ear, like that. That way I'll have four sections, two in the back on each side, and then two in the front. And I'm going to clip the front piece away. So I can see what I'm doing and I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the back if you have another mirror that you can place behind you so that way you can see what you're doing or if you have someone with you that can help you with the back make sure that you're not missing any spots I'm just gonna go section by section using the end of my brush to part the hair as I work along Okay, it's definitely a good thing that I got that gloss because I way underestimated how much hair I have. So yeah, I definitely needed at least two tubes. So what I'm doing is I applied it all over to the roots and I definitely don't have enough color to fully saturate the mids and ends. This is literally all that I have left now. So I'm just dragging it down along the perimeter of my hair just so I can cover the outside of it and of course now it's nighttime so the stores are closed so I wouldn't be able to run out and get more color anyway but I'm just gonna do this and then I'm going to take a comb See, when you're doing things yourself at home, even when you are a professional, sometimes shit happens and then you have to improvise. So I'm just combing it through to make sure that the top of my hair is completely saturated with the permanent color. And then the very ends, we will just have to use the gloss. I was planning on using that as a third step just to like go over everything to really make sure everything was like nice and even. But now we're just gonna have to use it in step two as our color on the ends. But the ends are already pretty dark anyway. And because they are so porous, like I keep saying, it's just gonna suck up the color anyway. So 
I think that it should take just fine. So for the gloss, I'm gonna apply that with a bottle to make it easier. This is liquid, so if I try to apply this with a bowl and brush, it's just gonna be a mess and get everywhere. So bottle is the easiest thing to do. So we're gonna do the full two ounce bottle, and then I'm going to do equal parts processing solution. I'm gonna squeeze the bottle a little bit. Put my finger over the top, give it a good shake this way. If you squeeze it first, all the color after you shake it won't like come flying out of the top of the bottle. I'm literally just gonna squeeze that out, just kind of do a small section at a time. The permanent color that's on my roots has to process for about 40 minutes. The gloss only needs 20, but after I'm done applying it, I think I'll just set a timer for 30 minutes because I figure it's gonna take me about 10 at least to apply this. And it's fine if the gloss sits on, you know, longer than the 20 minutes. It's not gonna do anything bad. I should have known this, honestly. Like, it's always better to get more color than you think you're gonna need. But yeah, ideally I would have just applied the permanent color all the way through. And uh, then once that was done processing, I would have washed it out and then applied this gloss on my wet hair just for like 15 minutes or so, just as like a topper. But this should work and come out good. So like I said, I'm gonna set a timer for 30 minutes and then I'm gonna hop in the shower, shampoo this really well out of my hair. Oh my God. I all over my neck even. Um, condition it as normal, do my usual thing, style it, and then I will show you the final result. So it's actually a couple weeks after I originally colored my hair. I forgot to record an outro originally. I do have some vlog footage though of what my hair looked like the next morning. So I will insert that here so you can see how it looked. That was, again, as you saw, after I did the permanent color up top and then I pulled that Redken gloss through the ends. So it still gave really good coverage. It came out really even, it looked beautiful. But then about a week or so after that, I did feel like there were a couple pieces that looked like they were starting to fade a little. So I decided to go back to the store and get a second box of that Wella four stroke seven one, the permanent color that I had used on top of my hair and I just pulled that only through the ends. I didn't reapply it up top, that wasn't necessary, but just on the ends where I had ran out of color the first time. So now my hair is 100% root to end covered in that permanent color. So this is how it looks now and you can see it's like nice and rich there's no dullness there's no like green tint to it but there's also no like red or orange so even though i filled it with a coppery color first because i didn't do like a super dark copper you don't see that poking through at all as far as touching up and maintaining this color i would only use the gloss from now on so that redkin shades eq 4n color I would just apply that, I would mix it with the processing solution, and you know, every four to six weeks or so, as I feel like the color looks like it needs to be refreshed, I would just pull that through from roots to ends. Now my natural color, as you saw, is only about a level lighter than this color that I have, so I would be fine with just using the gloss for a while. Once my roots really start to grow like a good amount, the color difference might be a little bit more noticeable. At that point, I would use the permanent color, but only on my roots and on my new growth. I would not reapply permanent color on hair that has already been colored because I just don't like the look of that. I feel like when you start to overlap permanent color too much, it starts to look a little bit flat. So to refresh what's already dark, I would use the gloss. And then if you do have lighter roots, and you wanna color that new growth, you can use that same permanent color on your roots only. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot. If you'd like to subscribe to see more content from me, I would also really appreciate that. But I hope you have a great day. Good luck coloring your hair, and I will see you later. Bye.